Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, July 23rd, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Great little walkthrough by DDA today in his post about how to analyze a compressed PowerShell script. DDA not only tells you how to recognize these type of scripts, but also how to decode it, and of course, under heavy use of DDA's own Ollie dump tool. And if you are running Palo Alto's Global Protect SSL VPN, make sure you are running the latest version. About a year ago, in July actually, 2018, Palo Alto released an update for Global Protect, but it didn't note a particular easy to exploit remote code execution vulnerability. To researchers that were actually doing a security assessment of Uber, ran into this vulnerability when they explored Uber's Global Protect setup. They reported the vulnerability to Palo Alto only to find out that it was already patched in the latest version of Palo Alto's software. The problem here, of course, is since Palo Alto never actually pointed out this vulnerability and it is a trivial to exploit vulnerability, it never really got the attention needed to get people to actually update their devices. So if you still run a firmware that's a year old or older, you may be vulnerable and you probably should double check that you run the latest version of Pan OS. And well, then we also got updates from Fortinet. Uh, we have updates for 40 OS, 40 Manager, and 40 Analyzer. All of these updates are fixing a critical certificate revocation vulnerability that could be used by an attacker to use an invalid certificate for authentication. So the way this would be exploited is that if you are revoking a certificate that, for example, is lost, if a device got stolen or something like that, the revocation may not necessarily be effective. As an additional quirk to this update, it has to be installed manually. And the NSO group, which is famous for selling high-end spyware, in particular to government clients, has announced that it has come up with a new smartphone spyware. They're calling this particular product Pegasus that is able to intercept data being sent to cloud servers, like, for example, Amazon, Apple, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, and possibly others. Well, this sounds uh, like a pretty impressive and difficult to implement feature. Remember that this spyware is running on the phone on a mobile device itself. And at that point, the data wouldn't be encrypted. So it's typically actually not that hard for software running on the device with the right privileges to actually intercept the data before it's being encrypted. The tricky part here is really how to install software with the right privileges privileges and that typically requires some form of rooting or jailbreaking the device. Such software should also be able to intercept credentials being used to authenticate to these cloud services so it may be able to then actually actively retrieve data from the cloud service. And then we got a new, pretty easy to exploit again, vulnerability in ProFTP. ProFTP is a popular open source FTP server. And this particular vulnerability does allow a user to copy files on the server that they don't have a right access to. So an attacker, for example, would be able to upload a file to the directory that the attacker has write access to. And then the attacker would be able to copy that file over and overwrite any arbitrary file on the system. Even if the attacker isn't able to upload their own file, they may be able to find another file on the system and just copy that over in a location that's then accessible to the attacker. ProFTP has had issues uh, with these particular commands, the CPFR and CPTO command uh, before, back in version 1.3.5, which was in 2015. 
A vulnerability in these commands allowed remote code execution by essentially uploading PHP payloads. And there is even a Metasploit module to exploit this vulnerability. So get those servers patched before someone will actively exploit this issue. Well, and this is it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.